Hello, this is general science practical exercise for grade 7, unit 4. Choose the correct answer. Question number 1. What is the primary purpose of a microscope? A. To observe large objects. B. To observe objects too small to be seen with the naked eye. C. To make objects appear farther away. D. To separate objects based on their size. The answer is to observe objects too small to be seen with the naked eye. This is because microscopes are designed to magnify objects that are too small to see unaided. Question number two. Which part of the microscope adjusts the amount of light reaching the specimen? A. Objective lens. B. Diaphragm C. Eyepiece D. Stage clips The answer is diaphragm. The diaphragm controls the light that passes through the specimen for clearer viewing. Question number three. Which scientist is credited with discovering cells? A. Albert Einstein B. Robert Hooke C. Lewis Pasteur D. Gregor Mendel The answer is Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke discovered cells when observing cork under a microscope. Question number four. Which of the following equation represents cellular respiration? A. Carbon dioxide plus water plus light gives us glucose plus oxygen. B. Glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. C. Hydrogen plus oxygen gives water. D. Nitrogen plus oxygen gives nitrogen dioxide. The answer is glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Cellular respiration converts glucose and oxygen into carbon dioxide, water and energy is the reason. Question number five. What is a microscope? A. A tool for measuring temperature. B. A device that magnifies small objects. C. A device for weighing substances. D. A tool used to see large objects. The answer is a device that magnifies small objects. A microscope is specifically designed to magnify small objects. Question number six. What type of microscope uses visible light to illuminate a specimen? A. Electron microscope. B. Light microscope. C. Fluorescence microscope. D. Confocal microscope. The answer is light microscope. A light microscope uses visible light for magnification. Question number seven. Which of the following is not a function of microscope? A. To magnify objects. B. To resolve details of small structures. C. To measure temperature. D. To allow observation of living organisms. The answer is to measure temperature. A microscope does not measure temperature. 
It is used for visual observation. Question number eight. What does the term magnification refer to in microscopy? A. The ability to change color. B. The increase in size of an object. C. The reduction of light intensity. D. The decrease in size of an object. The answer is the increase in size of an object. Magnification is the process of enlarging the appearance of an object. Question number nine. What is the function of the base of a microscope? A. To hold the lenses. B. To support the microscope. C. To adjust the focus. D. To illuminate the specimen. The answer is to support the microscope. The base provides stability and support for the entire microscope. Question number 10. What is the primary use of a microscope in biology? A to measure the weight of samples, B, to magnify and observe small specimens, C, to analyze chemical reactions, D, to determine the temperature of cells. The answer is to magnify and observe small specimens. The primary function of a microscope in biology is to magnify small specimen for observation. Question number 11. How can a microscope be used in a laboratory setting? A. To purify water. B. To observe cells and issues, tissues. C. To measure pH levels. D. To heat substances. The answer is to observe cells and tissues. Microscopes are essential tools for observing cells and tissues in laboratory settings. Question number 12. In which situation would a microscope be particularly useful? A. Observing the weather. B. Studying large animals. C. Examining bacteria in a sample. D. Measuring the length of a table. The answer is examining bacteria in a sample. Microscopes are ideal for examining small organisms such as bacteria that cannot be seen with the naked eye. Question number 13. Which type of microscope would you use to study the surface of a specimen in great detail? A. Light microscope. B. Transmission electron microscope. C. Scanning electron microscope. D. Compound microscope. The answer is scanning electron microscope. A scanning electron microscope provides detailed images of the surface of specimens. Question number 14. What safety precautions should be taken when using a microscope? A. Using it in a dimly lit room. B. Keeping the lenses clean and free of oil. C. Using it without looking through the eyepiece. D. Adjusting the focus with the highest magnification first.
The answer is keep the lens clean and free of oil because keeping the lens clean ensures clear observation and prevents damage. Question number 15. Which type of microscope uses beams of electrons instead of light? A. Light microscope B. Scanning electron microscope C. Compound microscope D. Simple microscope The answer is scanning electron microscope. A scanning electron microscope uses electrons for imaging visible light. Question number 16. Which microscope is best suited for observing the surface of small objects? A. Light microscope B. Scanning electron microscope C. Fluorescence microscope D. Compound microscope The answer is scanning electron microscope. A scanning electron microscope provides a detailed image of the surface of specimens. Question number 17. What is the characteristic feature of a fluorescence microscope? A. It uses ultraviolet light to excite fluorescent dyes. B. It magnifies objects using a single lens. C. It cannot be used to observe living cells. D. It operates under high vacuum conditions. The answer is, it uses ultraviolet light to excite fluorescent dyes. Question number 18. Because fluorescent microscopes use ultraviolet light to excite fluorescent dyes for imaging. Question number 18. Which type of microscope would be least effective for viewing small bacteria? A. Light microscope. B. Transmission electron microscope C. Scanning electron microscope D. Simple microscope The answer is simple microscope because a simple microscope has limited magnification and resolution making it less effective for viewing small bacteria. Question number 19. What is the function of the stage in a microscope? A. To focus the light on the specimen. B. To hold the slide containing the specimen. C. To magnify the image. D. To support the eyepiece. The answer is to hold the slide containing the specimen. The stage is the platform that holds the slide for viewing in microscope. Question number 20. Which part of the microscope is used to adjust focus? A. Eyepiece B. Coarse adjustment knob C. Base D. Diaphragm The answer is coarse adjustment knob. The coarse adjustment knob is used to bring the specimen into focus. Question number 21. What does the diaphragm do in a microscope? A. Magnifies the specimen B. Supports the lens 
C. Controls the amount of light reaching the specimen. D. Holds the eyepiece. The answer is controls the amount of light reaching the specimen. The diaphragm regulates the light intensity for better visibility of the specimen. Question number 22. Which part of the microscope is responsible for magnifying the image? A. Stage B. Objective lens C. Coarse adjustment knob D. Arm The answer is objective lens because the objective lens is the primary component that magnifies the specimen. Question number 23. What is the purpose of the arm in a microscope? A. To hold the stage. B. To connect the eyepiece to the base. C. To adjust the focus. D. To illuminate the specimen. The answer is to connect the eyepiece to the base. The arm connects various parts of the microscope and provides support. Question number 24. When using a microscope, which objective lens should you start with? A. Higher power lens B. Low power lens C. Oil immersion lens D. None of the above. The answer is low power lens. Because starting with low power lens makes it easier to locate the specimen. Question number 25. What is the best way to clean microscope lenses? A. Use a paper towel. B. Use lens paper or soft cloth. C. Use your fingers. D. Use water directly. The answer is use lens paper or soft cloth because lens paper or soft cloth prevents scratch lens cleans without damage because lens paper or a soft cloth prevents scratch and cleans without damage. Question number 26. Why is it important to adjust the diaphragm before viewing a specimen? A. To increase the weight of the microscope. B. To improve clarity and contrast of the image. C. To ensure the specimen is centered. D. To change the focus. The answer is to improve clarity and contrast of the image. Adjusting the diaphragm enhances clarity and contrast of the specimen image. Question number 27. Which technique is important when focusing on a specimen? A. Always use high magnification first. B. Move the stage away from the objective lens. 
C. Use course adjustment after fine adjustment. D. Always look through the eyepiece while adjusting the stage. The answer is move the stage away from the objective lens. This is because moving the A the stage away prevents crashing the object into the slide. Question number 28. What should you do if you can't find the specimen after switching to a higher power? A. Keep switching lens. B. Lower the stage. C. Lower the light intensity. D. Return to a lower power lens to locate it. The answer is return to a lower power lens to locate it. Returning to a lower power lens helps you locate the specimen more easily. Question number 29. What is a cell? A. The smallest unit of life. B. A type of tissue. C. A group of organs. D. A type of organism. The answer is the smallest unit of life. A cell is the smallest unit of life capable of performing all life functions. Question number 30. What term is used to describe a group of similar cells working together? A. Tissue B. Organ C. Organism D. System The answer is tissue. A tissue is composed of groups of similar cells that perform a specific function. Question number 31. What structure is found in all cells? A. Cell wall B. Nucleus C. Cell membrane D. Chloroplast The answer is cell membrane because all cells have a cell membrane that encloses the cell. Question number 32. Which of the following best describes prokaryotic cells? A. Cells without a nucleus. B. Cells with membrane bound organelles. C. Multicellular organisms. D. Cells that contain chlorophyll. The answer is cells without a nucleus. Prekaryotic cells lack a defined nucleus and membrane bound organelles. Question number 33. What is the main function of the nucleus in a cell? A. Energy production. B. Protein synthesis. C. Storage of generic genetic material. D. Photosynthesis The answer is storage of genetic material. The nucleus contains the cell's genetic material or DNA and controls cellular activities.
Question number 34. Who is credited with this, the discovery of sail? A. Albert Einstein B. Robert Hooke C. Lewis Spatcher D. Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek The answer is Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke is credited with the discovery of cells while observing cork under a microscope. Question number 35. What did Anton van Leeuwenhoek observe in his studies? A. Plant cells B. Bacteria and protozoa C. Animal cells D. Virus particles The answer is bacteria and protozoa. Anton van Leeuwenhoek is known for observing bacteria and protozoa through his improved microscope. Question number 36. What year did Robert Hooke publish his findings on cells? A. 1600. B. 1665. C. 1750 D. 1801 The answer is 1665. Robert Hooke published his findings in 1665 in his book Micrographia. Question number 37. Which of the following statement was not part of the cell theory? A. All living organisms are composed of one or more cells. B. Cells arise from pre-existing cells. C. Cells can spontaneously generate from non-living matter. D. The cell is the basic unit of life. The answer is, cells can spontaneously generate from non-living matter. This is because the cell theory states that cells arise from pre-existing cells, not spontaneously from non-living matter. Question number 38. What advancement helped improve the discovery of cells? A invention of the telescope b development of better lenses for microscopes c use of colored dyes d introduction of high-speed cameras the answer is development of better lenses for microscopes the development of better lenses allowed for improved magnification and clarity in microscopy. Question number 39. What is the function of the nucleus in a cell? A. Energy production. B. Storage of genetic information. C. Protein synthesis. D. Photosynthesis. The answer is storage of genetic information. The nucleus stores the cell's genetic material or DNA and regulates cellular activities. Question number 40. Which organelle is responsible for energy production? A. Ribosome B. Mitochondria C. Golgi apparatus D. Lysosome The answer is mitochondrion. 
Mitochondria are known as the powerhouse of the cell because they produce energy or ATP. Question number 41. What is the role of ribosomes in a cell? A. Lipid synthesis. B. DNA replication. C. Protein synthesis. D. Photosynthesis. The answer is protein synthesis. Ribosomes are responsible for synthesizing proteins by translating messengers RNA or mRNA. Question number 42. Which part of the cell is selectively permeable and controls what enters and exits the cell? A. Cell wall B. Nucleus C. Cell membrane D. Cytoplasm The answer is cell membrane. The cell membrane regulates the movement of substances into and out of the cell. Question number 43. What is the function of the Golgi apparatus? A. Protein synthesis B. Modifying and packaging proteins C. Lipid production D. Waste removal The answer is modifying and packaging proteins. The Golgi apparatus modifies sorts and packages proteins for secretion or use within the cell. Question number 44. Which structure is found in plant cells but not in animal cells? A. Cell membrane B. Nucleus C. Cell wall D. Mitochondria The answer is cell wall. Plant cells have a cell wall while animal cells do not. Question number 45. What is the primary function of chloroplasts? A. Energy production. B. Photosynthesis. C. Protein synthesis. D. Cellular respiration. The answer is photosynthesis. Chloroplasts are responsible for photosynthesis in plant cells. Question number 46. Which of the following organelles are larger in plant cells compared to animal cells? A. Nucleus B. Vacuoles C. Ribosomes D. Lysosomes The answer is vacuoles. Plant cells typically contain large central vacuoles, while animal cells have smaller vacuoles. Question number 47. Which organelle is responsible for the production of ATP in both plant and animal cells? A. Ribosome B. Chloroplast C. Mitochondria D. Golgi apparatus
The answer is mitochondria. Mitochondria produces ATP, the energy currency of cells, in both small cells. Question number 48. What is the main difference in shape between plant and animal cells? A. Plant cells are spherical, animal cells are rectangular. B. Plant cells are rectangular, animal cells are spherical. C. Both cells are the same shape. D. Plant cells have irregular shapes, animal cells are always round. The answer is, plant cells are rectangular, animal cells are spherical. Plant cells are typically rectangular due to their rigid cell walls, while animal cells are more irregular or round. Question number 49. What organelle is responsible for modifying, sorting and packaging proteins? A. Ribosome B. Endoplasmic reticulum or ER C. Golgi apparatus D. Lysosome The answer is Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus modifies, sorts and packages proteins for transport or secretion. Question number 50. What is the main function of the rough endoplasmic reticulum? A. Lipid synthesis B. Storage of nutrients C. Synthesis of proteins D. Energy production The answer is synthesis of proteins. The rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes on its surface and is primarily involved in the synthesis of proteins. Question number 51. Which organelle is involved in the breakdown of fatty acids and detoxification? A. Ribosome B. Lysosome C. Proxisome D. Mitochondria The answer is peroxosome. Proxisomes are involved in the breakdown of fatty acid detoxification of harmful substances. Question number 52. What is the function of the nucleoles? Question number 52. What is the function of the nucleoles? A. Produces ribosomes. B stores DNA, C, synthesis proteins, D, packages proteins. The answer is produce ribosomes. The nucleus is responsible for producing ribosomes within Question number 53. Why are cells often referred to as the building blocks of life? A. They are the smallest units of matter. B. They are the smallest units that can perform all life processes. C. They form the basis of DNA. D. They are only found in plants.
The answer is, they are the smallest units that can perform all life processes. Cells are the smallest units performing all functions necessary for life. Question number 54. What is the key reason cells must be able to reproduce? A. To maintain homeostasis. B. To ensure growth and development. C. To absorb nutrients. D. To produce energy. The answer is to ensure growth and development. Cell reproduction is essential for growth and development of organisms. Question number 55. Which of the following best describes the role of cells in multicellular organisms? A. They perform individual functions without coordination. B. They work together to maintain the organism's health and function. C. They operate independently of each other. D. They are not essential for survival. The answer is, they work together to maintain the organism's health and function. Dear viewers and listeners, this is all about part 1 of unit 4. See you in part 2 of unit 4 soon. If you have any questions and comments, you are welcome. Thank you. Part 2 Welcome to part 2 of unit 4. Question number 56. How do cells contribute to the process of metabolism? A. They provide structural support to tissues. B. They carry out biochemical reactions necessary for energy production. C. They store genetic information. D. They transport oxygen in the body. The answer is, they carry out biochemical reactions necessary for energy production. Because cells carry out metabolic processes that involve biochemical reactions essential for energy production and nutrient utilization. Question number 57. What role do stem cells play in living organisms? A. They can differentiate into various cell types and contribute to tissue regeneration. B. They are responsible for energy production. C. They transport nutrients and waste. D. They serve as the primary defense against pathogens. The answer is they can differentiate into various cell types and contribute to, to regeneration. Because stem cells have the unique ability to differentiate into various specialized cell types, playing a vital role in tissue repair and regeneration. Question number 58. What is the characteristics of unicellular organisms? A. They are made up of many cells. B. They can perform all life functions within one cell. C. They have specialized tissues. D. They reproduce only sexually. The answer is, they can perform all life functions within one cell. Unicellular organisms can perform all life functions within a single cell. Question number 
Question number 59. Which of the following is an example of a unicellular organism? A. Elephant. B. Oak tree. C. Bacterium. D. Goldfish. The answer is bacterium. Bacteria are unicellular organisms, whereas the other listed are multicellular. Question number 60. Multicellular organisms typically have A. Simple structures with no specialized cells B. Complex structures with specialized cells C. Only one type of cell D. No ability to grow The answer is complex structures with specialized cells. Multicellular organisms have complex structures with specialized cells that perform different functions. Question number 61. What is one advantage of being multicellular? A. Simpler reproduction. B. Increased efficiency in performing specialized functions. C. Lower energy requirements. D. Independence from environmental changes. The answer is increased efficiency in performing specialized functions. This is because multicellular organisms have specialized cells that increase efficiency in performing various functions. Question number 62. Which statement is true regarding multicellular organisms? A. They cannot regenerate damaged tissues. B. They rely on a single cell to carry out all life functions. C. They often have systems for coordination among cells. D. They are always larger than unicellular organisms. The answer is, they often have systems for coordination amongst This is because multicellular organisms often have systems for coordination and communication among specialized cells. Question number 63. What factor primarily determines a cell's shape? A. Its function. B. Its age. C. Its size. D. Its color. The answer is its function because a cell's shape is determined by its function. Different functions require different shapes. Question number 64. Which of the following cell shapes is best suited for absorption? A flat and thin, B, round and smooth, C, long and thin, D, irregular. The answer is flat and thin, because flat and thin cells like those in of the intestine increase surface area for absorption. Question number 65. Why do muscle cells have a long elongated shape? A. To store energy. 
B. To contract and enable movement. C. To provide structural support. D. To produce hormones. The answer is to contract and enable movement. Muscle cells are long and elongated to allow for contraction, which enable movement. Question number 66. Which type of cell is typically irregular in shape and can change form? A. Neurons B. Epithelial cells C. Red blood cells D. White blood cells The answer is white blood cells. White blood cells are irregular in shape and can change form to move through tissues and fight infections. Question number 67. The varying shapes of cells in different tissues allow for A. Uniformity in function across the organism B. Specialization for specific roles in the body C. Reduced energy consumption D. Faster growth rates The answer is specialization for specific roles in the body because different cell shapes allow for specialization, enabling cells to perform specific functions effectively. Question number 68. What is the basic unit of life? A. Tissue B. Organ C. Cell D. Organ system The answer is cell. The cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms. Question number 69. Which term refers to a group of similar cells working together to perform a specific function? A. Organ B. Tissue C. Cell D. Organ system The answer is tissue, because tissues are composed of or groups of similar cells that work together for a common purpose. Question number 70. Which of the following is an example of an organ? A. Blood B. Heart C. Epithelial tissue D. Neuron The answer is heart. The heart is an organ made up of various tissues working together to pump blood. Question number 71. What is an organ system? A. A group of similar cells. B. A structure made of multiple tissues. C. A group of organs that work together for a common purpose. D. The smallest unit of life. The answer is a group of organs that work together for a common purpose. Because an organ system consists of a group of organs that work together to perform complex functions. Question number 72. 
Which of the following is not a characteristics of tissues? A. Composed of similar cells. B. Performs a specific function. C. Can be part of multiple organs. D. Can exist independently. The answer is can exist independently because tissues cannot exist independently. They are part of organs. Question number 73. What is respiration? A. The process of taking in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide. B. The conversion of sunlight into energy. C. The breakdown of food to release energy. D. The growth of new cells. The answer is the breakdown of food to release energy. Because respiration is the process of breaking down food molecules to energy. Question number 74. What is the main purpose of respiration in living organisms? A. To provide energy for cellular activities. B. To eliminate waste products. C. To synthesize proteins. D. To maintain body temperature. The answer is to provide energy for cellular activities because the primary purpose of respiration is to generate energy for cellular activities. Question number 75. Which of the following is the chemical equation for cellular respiration? A. Carbon dioxide plus glucose gives oxygen plus water. B. Glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. C. Oxygen plus water gives us glucose plus carbon dioxide. D. Glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide plus water. The answer is glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. This equation represents the process of cellular respiration where glucose and oxygen are converted into carbon dioxide, water and energy. Question number 76. Which molecule is primarily used in the respiration to produce energy? A. Carbon dioxide. B. Oxygen. C. Glucose. D. Water. The answer is glucose, because glucose is the main energy source used in the process of respiration. Question number 77. What are the end products of respiration? A. Glucose and oxygen, B. Carbon dioxide and water, C. Oxygen and water, D. Glucose and energy. The answer is carbon dioxide and water because the end product of respiration are carbon dioxide and water. Question number 78. What is photosynthesis? A. The process of breaking down glucose for energy. B. The process by which plants convert light energy into chemical energy. C. The process of cellular respiration. D. The breakdown of carbon dioxide into oxygen.
The answer is the process by which plants convert light energy into chemical energy. Because photosynthesis is the process through which plants convert light energy into chemical energy stored in glucose. Question number 79. Which of the following is not a reactant in photosynthesis? A. Water B. Carbon dioxide C. Oxygen D. Light energy The answer is oxygen. Because oxygen is a product of photosynthesis, not a reactant. Question number 80. What is the overall chemical equation for photosynthesis? A. Carbon dioxide plus water plus light energy gives us glucose plus oxygen. B. Glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. C. Oxygen plus glucose gives us carbon dioxide plus water. D. Glucose plus carbon dioxide gives us water plus light energy. The answer is carbon dioxide plus water plus light energy gives us glucose plus oxygen. This equation represents the process of photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide and water along with light energy produce glucose and oxygen. Question number 81. What pigment is primarily involved in photosynthesis? A. Hemoglobin B. Chlorophyll C. Carotene D. Melanin The answer is Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green pigment in plants that captures light energy for photosynthesis. Question number 82. What is the main product of photosynthesis? A. Oxygen B. Carbon dioxide C. Glucose D. Water The answer is glucose. The main product of photosynthesis is glucose, which serves as a source of energy for the plant. Question number 83. What is the scientific method? A. A way to perform experiments without hypothesis. B. A systematic approach to problem solving in science. C. A set of rules for conducting research. D. A method to memorize facts. The answer is a systematic approach to problem solving in science. The scientific method is a systematic approach used to investigate phenomena, acquire new knowledge, correct, and integrate previous knowledge. Question number 84. What is a hypothesis? A. A proven fact. B. An educated guess based on observations. C. A final conclusion. D. A type of data analysis. The answer is an educated guess based on observations. 
because a hypothesis is an educated guess that can be tested through experiment. Question number 85. Which of the following is an example of a scientific inquiry? A. Asking a question and conducting experiments to find answers. B. Reading a textbook. C. Memorizing definitions. D. Watching a documentary. The answer is asking a question and conducting experiments to find answers. Scientific inquiry involves asking questions and conducting experiments to explore and understand concepts. Question number 86. What is the purpose of a control group in an experiment? A. To provide a comparison to the experimental group. B. To change all variables. C. To test multiple hypotheses. D. To eliminate all variables. The answer is to provide a comparison to the experimental group. A control group is used as a standard for comparison to measure the effects of tal variable. Question number 87. What type of data can be collected in a scientific experiment? A. Qualitative data only. B. Quantitative data only. C. Both qualitative and quantitative data. D. Anecdotal data only. The answer is both qualitative and quantitative data. Scientific experiments can yield both qualitative, which is descriptive, and quantitative or numerical data. Question number 88. What is the highest taxonomic rank in the classification system? A. Phylum B. Kingdom C. Class D. Domain The answer is Domain. The Domain is the highest taxonomic rank above Kingdom. Question number 89. Which of the following ranks is more specific than genus? A. Kingdom B. Species C. Phylum D. Class The answer is Species. Species as is more specific than genus in the classification hierarchy. Question number 90. Which taxonomic rank groups organisms that share a common ancestor? A. Class B. Family C. Order D. All of the above The answer is all of the above. All of these ranks group organisms that share a common ancestor, reflecting evolutionary relationships. Question number 91. 
What is the correct order of taxonomic classification from broadest to most specific? A. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. B. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. C. Domain, kingdom, class, phylum, order, family, genus. D. Kingdom, domain, class, order, family, genus, and species. The answer is domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Because the correct order is domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Question number 92. In the scientific name Homo sapiens, which part represents the genus? A. Homo B. Sapiens D. Both parts D. Neither part The answer is Homo. In the name Homo sapiens, Homo is the genus, while sapiens specifies the species. Question number 93. What is the main purpose of photosynthesis in ecosystems? A. To produce carbon dioxide. B. To convert light energy into chemical energy. C. To break down glucose for energy. D to release energy into the atmosphere. The answer is to convert light energy into chemical energy. Photosynthesis converts light energy into chemical energy stored in glucose, which is essential and energy transfer. Question number 94. Which of the following best describes the relationship between photosynthesis and cellular respiration? A. They are completely unrelated processes. B. Photosynthesis produces glucose and oxygen, which are used in cellular respiration. C. Cellular respiration produces glucose and oxygen, which are used in photosynthesis. D. Both processes occur only in plants. The answer will be photosynthesis produces glucose and oxygen which are used in cellular respiration. Photosynthesis generates glucose and oxygen which are the reactants needed for cellular respiration. Question number 95. In which part of the plant does photosynthesis primarily occur? A. Roots B. Stems C. Leaves D. Flowers The answer is leaves. Photosynthesis primarily occurs in the leaves where chloroplasts are concentrated. Question number 96. Which organisms perform cellular respiration? A. Only plants. B. Only animals. C. All living organisms. D. Only fungi.
The answer is all living organisms. Because all living organisms, including plants, animals and the fungi, perform cellular respiration to generate energy. Question 97. What is the energy currency produced in cellular respiration? A. Glucose B. ATP C. Oxygen D. NADPH The answer is ATP. ATP which is adenosine triphosphate is the primary energy currency produced during cellular respiration. Question number 98. What is the function of the cell membrane? A. To provide structural support. B. To control the movement of substances in and out of the cell. C to produce energy, D to store genetic information. The answer is to control the movement of substances in and out of the cell because the cell membrane regulates the entry and exit of substances maintaining homeostasis. Question number 100. What is the primary function of ribosomes? A. To synthesize proteins. B. To store waste products. C. To digest cellular materials. D. To regulate cell division. The answer is to synthesize proteins. Ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis, translating mRNA into polypeptides. Question 101. Which part of the cell contains the genetic material? A. Cytoplasm B. Nucleus C. Cell membrane D. Golgi apparatus The answer is nucleus because the nucleus houses the cell's genetic material or DNA. Question 102. What is the role of the endoplasmic reticulum or ER? A. To package and distribute proteins. B. To produce lipids and proteins. C. To control cellular respiration. D. To provide structural support. The answer is to produce lipids and proteins. The endoplasmic reticulum involved in the synthesis of lipids and proteins. What is natural selection? A. The process where organisms adapt to their environment. B. The mechanism by which individuals with advantageous traits survive and reproduce. C. A method of breeding plants and animals. D. A theory that explains how species become extinct. The answer will be the mechanism by which individuals with 
advantageous traits survive and reproduce. Because natural selection is the process where individuals with advantageous traits are more likely to survive and reproduce, passing those traits to the next generation. Question 104. Which of the following is not a component of natural selection? A. Variation in traits. B. Inheritance of traits. C. Overproduction of offspring. D. Environmental stability. The answer will be environmental stability because environmental stability or change is a driving factor in natural selection as it creates challenges for survival. Question 105. What is the role of variation in natural selection? A. It decreases the likelihood of survival. B. It allows populations to adapt to changing environments. C. It ensures all offspring are identical. D. It prevents mutations from occurring. The answer is it allows populations to changing environments. Variation provides the raw materials for natural selection, allowing populations to adapt to their environments. Question number 106. Which of the following is an example of an adaptation? A. A bird migrating south for the winter. B. A plant growing taller to reach sunlight. C. A turtle laying many eggs. D. All of the above. The answer is all of the above. All of these options illustrate adaptations that enhance survival and reproductive success in different environments. Question number 107. How does natural selection lead to evolution? A. It creates new species immediately. B. It selects for traits that enhance reproductive success over many generations. C. It eliminates all weaker individuals. D. It has no impact on genetic diversity. The answer is, it selects for traits that enhances reproductive success over many generations. Because natural selection acts on existing variations, favoring traits that enhances reproductive success, leading to gradual changes in populations over generations or evolution. Say true or false. Microscopes are only used in scientific research. The answer is false. Because microscopes are also used in education, medicine and various industries.
The use of microscope allows for the observation of living organisms only. The answer is false, because microscopes can be used to observe both living and non-living specimens. Match the terms with descriptions. Have you finished? Let's go to the answers. Cell is a basic unit of life. Tissue is a group of similar cells. Organ is a structure made of different tissues. Organ system, group of organs working together. Organism, complete living entity performing a specific function. Match the terms with descriptions again. Finished? Thank you. Let's proceed to the answers. Domain is the broadest taxonomic category. Kingdom is a classification group that includes similar phyla. Phylum, group of organisms with shared traits. Genus, Group of closely related species and the species basic unit of biological classification. This is all for Unit 4 of Jazz Science for Grade 7. If you have any question or comment, you are welcome. I am really thankful for your special attention and consideration of this YouTube channel. If possible, please try to share it for your individuals. Thank you very much.